I recently started my new job as an armourer's apprentice for Lancaster Armoury, and, inspired by my recent trip to battle to watch the 1066 Hastings reenactment event, I wanted my first project to be a historically authentic Norman nasal helmet. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a Norman helmet from scratch in just one day. First, you'll want to measure out two triangular shapes of 2mm mild steel with curved sides, measured to the circumference of your head, then halved. With a little extra depending on what type of padded liner you wish to use for your head, then cut them out. Using a simple open forge like this, place one of the metal sheets down at a 45 degree angle so you can easily blast it with a propane torch. You can make these helmets without heat, but this makes it a lot quicker, plus you'll still need to weld the pieces together later. Torch the sheet for a few minutes until you have a nice red glow in the centre, making sure to keep the torch facing straight forwards towards the sheet at a 90 degree angle to ensure an even heat. Then, using a pair of tongs, grab the sheet and place on a surface for hitting. A shallow, concave surface is a good choice, as you can be fairly rough with this as long as you keep hitting the metal face on and keep the strikes over the middle of the dishing bowl so there will always be a gap of air between the metal and the hard surface so you're not squishing the metal. Begin by hitting the centre with a large planishing hammer, starting to turn the sheet with the tongs as you strike in an outward spiralling pattern. You'll want to be fairly quick with this as the metal cools down very fast and will become harder to work with. You should also be able to get the desired shape in a crude form on the first heat. Quench the curved metal helmet half in a barrel of water to cool it down, then repeat the process with the second half. This stage should take approximately 10 minutes per sheet. The next step is to smoothen out all those big lumps and bumps. So, place the sheet on the flat of an anvil, and using the same hammer, begin to planish out all the bumps with softer, more careful strikes. You'll want to keep the hammer hitting in the same location the entire time, always moving the metal around to ensure the hammer is striking evenly and flat against the anvil's surface. While you're smoothing out the bumps, remember to continually assess the edges, making sure to flatten any twists that start to occur, and regularly hammer down the sides to keep a smooth and even curve. Keep pausing to run your hand over the outside of the metal, as you can quickly feel for any bumps or flat areas that need addressing. For both sheets, this process should take a further 20 minutes to planish out all the bumps to a workable smoothness for the grinding stage later on. You'll probably see one edge curling up more than the other. The best way to combat this is using the broader side of a raising hammer to tap out in even lines starting at the wider part of the edge, making your way slowly to the tip. Continue to assess your progress to avoid flattening the edge out too much and giving yourself more work and giving it more of a curve again. Once you're happy with the smoothness of your helmet halves, it's time to bang in a more curved shape. Over the horn of an anvil, Place the metal down so the top of the helmet will be at the tip of the horn. Then find an angle you're happy with and give a few hard strikes with a heavy, flat-headed hammer. Remember that you're not hitting the metal against the surface of the anvil horn. You're moving the edge of the metal slightly over the horn so you only have air underneath. This will ensure an even curve throughout the entire helmet half. You'll want to repeat this until the base of each half is approximately semicircular. They don't need to be a perfect half of the circle just yet, as you'll be grinding off any excess material anyway to get the straight edge for the welding process. You'll also want the helmet to be oval shaped, since the human skull isn't perfectly circular. Once you're happy with your two halves, it's time for the welding process. Although you don't need to for this type of helmet, I wanted to add a nasal bar, so I cut out a 4cm by 10cm rectangle of 2mm mild steel to weld onto the helmet. 
I'll be trimming it down to my preferred size later, but it's always good to have too much material rather than too little to allow for mistakes. As you can see here, we have multiple helmets currently being welded, because we also sell them to reenactors and collectors alike through our website, Lancaster Armoury. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in a handmade, reenactment safe nasal helmet made in England. Now that the helmet is all welded, we mark and drill in the rivet holes for the straps. First we drill the holes to save time, but then we use a punch to hammer in an indentation around the holes. I'll explain this in more depth in another video, but I make this indentation around the hole to add authenticity. You see Norman helmet makers didn't have drills, instead they would punch the hole through using a small metal stake and a hammer. This punching process would cause the metal around the hole to be pushed in a little, causing a shallow indentation. This is a very important thing to consider when doing the grinding and finishing stage, which I'll discuss later on in the video. At this point, you can cut the nasal bar to your desired size and shape, then file down any grind marks to make it a bit smoother. Now that we have the helmet punched, we blacken the inside using linseed oil. You wipe the linseed oil around the inside of the helmet, then you place it back in the forge and evenly blast it with heat from the outside, keeping a careful eye on the colour change. As soon as the helmet begins to turn blue, turn off the heat and allow to cool for about 15 minutes. Once this is done, you'll see that the linseed oil has perfectly cooked into the metal to give a beautiful blackened finish. Next, we begin the grinding stage. Here, you'll reap the benefits from getting a smooth surface in the planishing stage earlier, being able to achieve an even finish. After grinding, we use a few different files to erase the scarring lines caused by the mechanical grinder. During the Norman period, of course, these armorsmiths would have completed this whole process with the use of files, so you'd get many lines scarring the surface. Again, to achieve authenticity, we purposefully leave some of these lines in, with a particular focus on leaving heavier scar lines nearer the bottom of the helmet, since this is commonly seen in originals, even the high-end examples. Next time you visit a museum with medieval armour, look around the edges and you'll see the same file marks left in the armour's surface. Now, I'd like to refer you to something that I pointed out earlier. Remember the indentations we made around the rivet holes? Well, in historical originals, these indentations often kept the ungrinded and unpolished darkened colour of the metal. This may have been because the medieval armorsmiths could not get a file into these indentations to polish it up. With modern tools, we could easily remove this, but to be consistent with our rule of historical authenticity here at Lancaster Armoury, we choose to keep these in as the finished piece will more accurately resemble the originals that we are trying to replicate. The second to last step is the leather work. I measure out 8 strips of leather which are roughly 1.5cm by 20cm long, and after hole punching them for the rivets, I then measure out 2 more strips of leather for my custom chin strap. This will be the length that you personally want to fit you. I then use a red dye on the chin straps, and allowed to dry for a few hours before wiping a thin layer of Vaseline over them to get a nice shine, while also helping to prevent rot. Using an authentic early medieval buckle, I fold the end of the leather chin strap over and rivet it in place. The last step is the assembly. We rivet the chin straps to the helmet, followed by the internal liner which we tie together with a simple cord. This is an internal suspension method known as a spider. And there we go, we now have the finished piece. You can use a selection of soft scouring pads and oils to achieve whichever finish you desire. I personally chose a dark satin finish which I believe would have been common for the Norman helmets reserved for the High Lords during this period. If you're interested in purchasing a medieval helmet just like this, 
I will be hand-making them and selling them on behalf of Lancaster Armoury on their website, all links of which will be left in the description below. And I will also be making a follow-up video discussing how to achieve historical accuracy to our best efforts when attempting to replicate originals made by real medieval armorsmiths. But for now, thanks for watching.